So this is uh, yet another talk about uh, FHC, but this time it's on the circuit privacy point of view. So quick reminders. First, what is FHC and what is, it is used, what is it used for? So let's say you want to compute something on the cloud. Let's say you want an online di diagnostic because you are feeling symptoms and you don't know what they are. You send your data, your medical data to a server. It runs some computation and returns a diagnosis. The thing is, you want your medical data to remain private and even the diagnosis, you don't want it out on the uh, internet. So you encrypt your data. And you want to encrypt it in a way that, uh, so that uh, uh, algorithms can still be run on your data. That's what we call FHC. Uh, an example of FHC, which you might have seen a few times already at uh, this conference, is uh, Gentry Sci Waters 2013. So the G matrix here is not, uh, the weight is made is not really important. Uh, what matters is uh, how you encrypt and your, how you do uh, operations. So um, to encrypt, you have a random part, which is uh, the matrix A. You multiply it by the secret S, and you add the noise part. So uh, to, um, just quickly, to do operations, to do a sum, you do just the sum of encryptions. And the product is a bit more uh, intriguing in that uh, to do a product, you need to multiply by G minus 1, which is not a matrix, it's an algorithm, uh, which is such that G times G minus 1 of something, like G times G minus 1 of V is equal to V, and uh, G minus 1 has to be small. So uh, here, just uh, some color coding. Orange means uh, uniform, and blue means small for the rest of the talk. So that's uh, GSW encryption. It was uh, published in 2013, uh, reworked a few times uh, afterwards. And uh, the problem is that now you get uh, FHC, but the error term, these error terms, uh, is modified during the operations. So uh, by analyzing the outputs, the user can guess, or maybe uh, at least get some information about the algorithm that was run on, the, on his data. And uh, maybe the server uh, is running some proprietary uh, algorithm and does not want it leaked. So the focus of this work is to uh, see how we can hide the, uh, everything that uh, all the operations that were done on the data. So uh, a toy example to see uh, how information is leaked. Let's say you have three encryptions of zero. It's not very interesting, but well, you have three encryptions of zero, and the server wants to sum two of them. The plain text associated would be zero, because it's just the sum of zero plus zero. But if he sums, let's say, C1 and C2, the error term, which the user will be able to recover, will be E1 plus E2. So he can know exactly which ciphertext the server has uh, summed, and then uh, he gains the information about the algorithm. He knows exactly what the user did. So that's what we want to avoid. We want that the evaluation of a function and uh, on a bunch of ciphertext should reveal nothing but the output of the function on the associated plain text. So this has been uh, addressed not, uh, not that many times, but a few times already. So in the seminar work of Gentry, let's say you have a ciphertext which is, which is the result of an evaluation. And the first solution proposed by Gentry was to add some noise. Since uh, the information is leaked in the noise, if we add an amount of noise that is super polynomial in what already exists, all the noise, all the information will be destroyed. So the advantage is that you destroy all the information that was leaked. The disadvantage is that you need to add super polynomial amount of noise. And since the noise needs to be smaller than the parameter Q, which is the modulus, the parameter Q needs to be super exponential. And uh, another problem is that you cannot do uh, more operations on your ciphertext since you have already added a, a very high amount of noise. A uh, more recent approach was by Duca and Stelle in uh, Eurocrypt 2016. And it consisted in first adding some noise, but this time it's only at the same size as the noise already in the ciphertext. And then doing a bootstrapping. So here it's a bit of a pedantic way to write it, but uh, you evaluate the decryption, uh, uh, the decryption circuit on an encryption of the secret key, which means that you get a new ciphertext of the same plain text, but with a known bounded amount of noise. So 
This is not enough to uh, hide the computations, but we can repeat. And each time we repeat this process, we add some entropy to the noise, and if we repeat it a uh, number of times linear in the security parameter, then all the noise will be uh, randomized. So this works with polynomial modulus, since we don't have to add uh, too, too much noise. We can do more operations, so this is multi-op. And the problem is that uh, it requires bootstrapping. So this uh, requires a circular security assumption, since we have an encryption of secret key under itself. Uh, this is an assumption that is not very well known. And uh, it requ requires a linear number of time. To bootstrap a linear number of time, bootstrapping can be quite expensive, so uh, this adds a lot of computation. Then there is our approach, approach. so still same ciphertext. We add a noise that is practically the same size as the, the previous noise, and we do nothing else. The trick here is that our noise is not blue, it's green, <laughs> which means that it's not just small, it's a small Gaussian. It has to come from a Gaussian distribution with uh, pr appropriate parameters. And uh, what we did in our paper is to uh, analyze in depth the growth of the noise to show that uh, it's in fact just adding a small noise is enough to hide everything. So uh, as before, we had a small noise, so we have a polynomial modulus. We don't need any circular security here because we don't do bootstrapping, and we can do multi-hop. Uh, the problem is that uh, since uh, this is for, um, this applies to branching programs, it only works for NC1, which in itself is not really a, an issue because uh, there is no FHC for uh, old circuits without bootstrapping. So uh, as long as we don't use bootstrapping, it's uh, normal that we are only for NC1 circuits. Another issue is that it only works for the encryption that I have uh, shown previously. There are other uh, encryption, uh, FHE encryption schemes, but this one is uh, tailor-made for GSW encryption, and it leaks the size of the function, or at least a bound on the size of a function. So now, how do we do this exactly? So we uh, will have to go a bit more in depth in uh, branching programs. So a branching program is a succession of states, state v0, v1, v2. Um, and uh, to progress from one state to the other, there is, we apply a permutation uh, according to a choice variable, which is to say here, if the variable x1 is equal to 1, we will go from this state to this one. If x2 is equal to 0, we will go from this state to this one. And uh, at the end of the branching program evaluation, if the state we reach is the first one, the right, uh, top rightmost one, the branching program returns one, otherwise it returns zero. So how do we write this down? This is a multiplexer. Uh, multiplexer. So let's say that uh, like vt of i will be this state. It will be equal to this one if x2 is equal to one, and it will be equal to this one if x2 is equal to zero. We follow the incoming arrows, which is to say that uh, vt minus one is a multiplexer of the variable choice the choice variable and the two previous uh, locations. So this can be rewritten as a uh, polynomial equation, like uh, xt times vt minus 1 plus 1 minus 60 times vt minus 1. And now this is for branching programs on plain text, and we want to do the same thing on ciphertext. And it's the exact same thing. So instead of having uh, plain text uh, states, we have encryptions. So we used to have uh, like, one, zero, zero, here we will have an encryption of one year, an encryption of zero, and encryption of zero. And uh, we will have encrypted choice bits. And to do the, this operation, we do the exact same thing on ciphertext. So vt of i will be ct, which is the encrypted choice bit. To multiply, we need to apply g minus one, times vt minus one of j, plus g, which is an encryption of one, it's just a noiseless encryption of one, minus ct, times g minus one, uh, applied to vt minus 1 of k. So exact same thing as before, but on ciphertext. And this is what we want to analyze to show that it does not really leak any information. So what do we do? We will rewrite the choice uh, ciphertext to be uh, equal to a matrix plus the choice bit times g. It's just uh, how the ciphertext is formed. 
And here you just have to trust me, but if we reorder the terms, we get this. So what does this correspond to exactly? This, you can see, is a previous step of computation. This is vt minus one, so the previous state uh, taken at the right place according to the choice bit. So this will be the previous ciphertext, and this will be an additional noise that comes from the operation we have made. So if we should show that the additional noise does not leak any information about the operation that was made at this step, we can just do an induction on each step and show that no, nothing, no information is leaked at all during the branching program. So that's what we will be uh, intent on doing. And to do this, we, I will show the core lemma of uh, our paper, which is GSW re-randomization. So let's say we have an encryption of zero, so uh, just a ciphertext of zero, with uh, an error vector E. Then we show that for any matrix V, just any matrix, if we do C times G minus one of V plus zero times Z, it is statistically distinguishable from C prime. I will uh, explain what everything is. So first, observe that G minus one is no longer blue, it's green, which means that G minus one now has to be a Gaussian. So uh, previously, all we wanted was that G times G minus one uh, of V it was equal to V. Now we want G minus one of V to be a Gaussian con conditioned on this. Uh, it's not hard to do. It has been uh, done by uh, Gentry, Pekert, and Vaikutanathan. And uh, it's just uh, sampling a Gaussian on a lattice. And uh, the second thing we do is we add a small Gaussian noise in the form of Z. And just by doing this, we can show that uh, re-randomizing a ciphertext like this gives a fresh encryption of zero. So it gives a new ciphertext of zero, which has a Gaussian parameter norm of E. So it leaks the norm of uh, the previous error but it is completely independent of v on V. It does not matter at all what V is in this context. So how do we modify our uh, branching program evaluation? This is our branching program evaluation. First, we take the Gaussian G minus one, we replace the G minus one by the Gaussian one, and then we add noise. So here we add it two times because we have two times uh, something times G minus one. So if we reorder, we have BT, which uh, here is a ciphertext of uh, an encryption of zero, since uh, as we have seen before, CT is equals BT plus XG. So this is an encryption of zero times G minus one of something plus a small error and second time the same thing. Which means that both of these can be replaced by ciphertext that encrypt zero and are completely independent of VT minus one and uh, of J and VT minus one of K. So everything that is leaked is on, only, uh, the only leakage is dependent on the choice bit CT. So we already hide all the prime mutations in the branching program. And uh, what we show is that it does not really matter that we leak uh, some information about CT because we only leak, we only sum uh, new ciphertext which, dep which depends on CT. So let's see how the noise evolves. So we have our first, first uh, encrypted state, which has noise zero. We start with the noiseless encryptions. Then we do one round of uh, operations. So the noise on the new uh, encrypted state will be the noise on the previous one plus something that depends on C1. So a Gaussian that depends on the error in C1. So uh, it only depends on this uh, Gaussian. Then we, add, we do the second step. It will be the previous noise plus a Gaussian that depends on C2. So it will be the sum of two Gaussians, one that depends on C1, one that depends on C2. And then we just repeat this until the last step. So at the last step, we will get something that uh, the noise in the final, uh, <coughs> cipher uh, the final state will only be the sum of, uh, of Gaussians that depend on the, all the choices bit. So uh, what we can simply do is Pad the branching program, just add useless steps, a few uh, like uh, polynomial amount of them, so that uh, the, each choice bit will be the same, used the same number of time. This way we do not leak, all, all we leaked was the number of time each choice bit was used, 
now they are all used the same number of times, so all we leak is the size of the branching program. And uh, like this, we have achieved uh, secret privacy since we do not no longer leak either the permutations nor the choice bit used at each step. And that's it.